Usually when I talk about Twitch drama, it's goofier topics like that girl who was banned for queefing into her mic. And by the way, she was kind of a pioneer, like an actual innovator in the field. She was like the Tesla of farting. And the Queef Queen actually started a trend on Twitch for a little while where recently ASMR streamers were farting into their mics for sub goals. So unfortunately for the valedictorian of vaginal air expulsion, she was just a little early to this. She just was ahead of her time. Had she been queefing during this meta, she could have probably popped off on subs, but she just she got there too soon. Also, those streamers that were farting into their mics also got temp bans for it, so it, the result was the same, but she wasn't able to squeeze as much juice from it as they were able to. But uh, anyway, this is not one of those goofier topics. Today we're talking about something actually serious, like like genuinely awful. Yesterday I received quite a few emails and mentions on Twitter letting me know about a streamer who was allegedly exposed for grooming underage girls and being a predator, shit like that. And for some reason, the guy that was accused of all of these things mentioned me. In this video on his channel, it says, Hopefully Charlie will make a video on this and help prove my innocence. He's a homie. I don't, I don't know if this is about me, but a lot of people seem to think that it was. I want to make it clear, I don't know this guy. So I haven't, like, defended him or anything like that. And I don't know why people are emailing me asking why I'm defending him when I haven't done or even said anything about this until right now. It's important to know that all of these are just allegations at the moment. Nothing is proven but seems like some pretty hard evidence. This isn't just some, like, Twitter dog shit where one anonymous account says, In 2013 at Megacon Orlando at the washing machine enthusiast booth, uh, soda poppin' was groping on my nutsack, fondling it a little bit aggressively. It felt good at first, then it got a little weird when he started tugging on my nutsack hairs. And, you know, ever since then, I haven't been the same. Soda poppin's a predator. You know, it's not just, like, baseless nonsense or anything. Like, there is real evidence against this streamer for the things that they're being accused of. So, since that video title has led people to believe that I'm somehow involved in this whole thing, I thought it was at least worth talking about. So, I want to go over the full lore of the situation, as well as some things about it that just don't add up about all of it. So this all started with a thread on Livestream Fails, LSF, also known as the home to XQC's clips. If you miss an XQC stream, you can just check Livestream Fails and see every single moment of it posted there on the front page of it. Of course, I'm only kidding. There's Ms. Kiff clips as well. But last night there was an anomaly. Some kind of like fucking solar eclipse had occurred on Livestream Fails where the top post wasn't XQC or Ms. Kiff. It was this. And it's about this user talking about their experience with a streamer. And you can read it for yourself, but the gist of it is they were following this channel in 2018 and randomly decided to check in on them that evening. And he believes that his name must have sounded similar to a girl's name on the platform because the streamer reached out asking if they were a girl and asking the chat, and then the following ensued. I'm blurring out the streamer's name everywhere just in case this all does turn out to be false, a hoax, or even worse, a malicious attempt to ruin one innocent person's career. So I just want you to keep that in mind that that's why I'm doing that, just because none of this is completely confirmed beyond a shadow of a doubt. He reached out using Twitch Whispers, which is akin to using AOL Instant Messenger to get in contact with somebody. No one has used Twitch Whispers in years. This was probably the first time this was even activated since Twitch launched. Nobody uses Whispers, so... I mean, call this guy old-fashioned. I mean, this was pretty wild. I didn't even know this even still existed. It's an archaic system. More people use carrier pigeons than Twitch Whispers. But as you can see, he gets in touch. Are you a girl? Yes. Why do you ask? Want to DM on Discord and then tries to add them. So they decide to add them on Discord and this is the conversation they have. He asks what state and how old they are. So basically some Omegle shit, ASL, age, sex, location. They respond with 17, 18 soon, streamer says, really nice, young, I like that, I could fly you to me, maybe. And then the conversation really starts to look like something you'd hear Chris Hansen reading. They ask when they started to follow, they say, check in the chat and I'll type something. So the streamer responds with, when you were a teeny then, he he. I actually haven't heard or seen the word teeny since I was a fucking teeny, like 11 or 12 years old. So that was quite a, a blast from the past. And then this is where it gets very fucking weird. Uh, the streamer says, let me show you a little vid, are you home? And you can probably already guess the video that they send. 
I'll go ahead and spoil the surprise. It is not an EDP situation where he sends a picture of his shit. He sends no shit pics. This is a video of him jerking off, beating on his meat. Just uh, playing the skin flute. Obviously won't be showing even a pixel of that video. From there they say, Would you love it, honey, if you could sit on me and feel my hard dick in your pussy? Hee hee. Bunch of hearts. Well, that's kind of that's kind of sweet, right? I mean, that's like Valentine's Day kind of shit right there. And then he says that he's horny. As if that was a secret. I mean, there's nothing left to the imagination here. I, I mean, he sent a video of him jerking off. I would imagine there's some horniness levels reaching critical mass. He's going fucking nuclear meltdown mode of horniness. Uh, then again, it would feel so good for you, baby. Would you like, would you like to, hee hee, babe? And then that's when the poster says, I'm making an LSF thread right now. You like grooming young girls. I'll get you banned everywhere. So he basically just says that he's making the, the thread about all of this. And then in response to him revealing that he is not a 17-year-old girl and is in fact going to be reporting this behavior on Reddit, uh, the streamer responds with something I can't show anything of, because he drops the n-word a few times, but he basically says, I knew you were fake, and then says the n-word quite a few times. So I'm, I'm not showing any of that, but that's where those screenshots end. He then gives a little evidence to prove that the Discord account that he's sharing in the screenshots belongs to the streamer, and that's kind of where that interaction comes completed. In the comments, other people were finding video clips where the streamer was asking how he can delete every video on his hard drive at the push of a button once all of this was coming to light. It seemed like he really wanted to find a program to scrub his hard drive of all of his videos all at once, which is a little weird. Uh, some of his old tweets were dug up where he was talking about having sex with 14-year-olds is less of a crime than stealing Coca-Cola, as well as some other really fucking gross tweets. But I, I'd like to talk about a few things here. On LSF, there has been a few times in the past where a poster has made a thread about a streamer they don't like, accusing them of some horrible things that turned out to be completely false. Even though the evidence made a lot of sense, they'd have like screenshots of shit, what they didn't show was what actually transpired, being like extremely manipulative, lying and stuff like that in order to get that kind of reaction and make that kind of narrative on LSF in order to just farm karma points or hurt the streamer they don't like. I'm not saying that's what happened here, I'm just saying this kind of thing has happened in the past and was proven to be a hoax. Like the fucking Bigfoot or Satchmo, shit like that. Right now this is the only post and only person talking about this streamer like this. I can't find anything else from anyone sharing a similar experience they've had with this streamer or anything even close to this kind of experience with them. Which strikes me as a little odd because if he is grooming underage girls so actively that he would reach out to someone in his chat he thought was a girl based on just their Twitch name, you would think there'd be other victims that would come forward and share a similar experience with this person, but I haven't seen anything like that. It is possible that this is just so new that no one else has had a chance to come forward with that kind of information. This is less than a day old, so that's definitely a possibility, but it does strike me as odd that he's so active that he'll reach out to someone that he even has like a small fucking smell of a female in his chat and reach out and like start jerking off for them that it would only be this one isolated incident. That would strike me as like a pattern, not just like a one-time thing. So I would have expected more people to have similar stories, but I haven't seen anything like that yet. So for now, this is all we have to go off of. And the tweets are extremely suspicious, but what really strikes me as odd is that the profile picture is like the stereotypical neck beard thing, like very self-aware neck beard anime weeb. It really seems like a parody account. On Twitter, there are people that are open pedophiles, like that's not uncommon for Twitter, but it strikes me as weird that the profile pic would be like the neck beard people make fun of, like the anime shit neck beard thing while saying these things. It really seems like it was supposed to be satire, and I, I don't know if it is or not. Either way, it's dog shit satire. But the account's been deleted, so I can't really go through and look at all of it myself. There's only a couple screenshots of the individual tweets now. And from what I was reading from the, uh, the active members in his community during all of this, he wanted to be on LSF. He's, apparently, they were saying he always wanted to be the top post on LSF. So it almost seems like it could have even been manufactured to a certain degree. Which would be the dumbest fucking way of going about that, to label, have you be labeled a pedophile by so many people in the Twitch community, I don't think does anything good for your streaming career, if that really is what was going on here. 
So I, I don't know if I really believe that, but there are some things in this that just don't make sense to me. The Discord having no profile pick, immediately sharing his Discord, and then going 0 to 100. Hey, where do you live? Do you want to see me put my finger in my urethra? Just fucking tugging on his meat real hard after like four text messages back and forth. Like, it all just seems really fishy to me. And his chat going on about how you fell for Malord's schemes. They kept saying, like, Malord. Treating him like he was some kind of supervillain mastermind and we were just pawns in his game. Like, this is exactly what he wanted. Which wouldn't make him a mastermind and make him a master fucking idiot. Because this is such a dumb idea for, like, publicity, if that really is what's going on here. It just really, all of it just doesn't add up to me. Like, to be so open about, you know, pedophile predator shit, that just doesn't make any sense. There's also this, so the poster was replying to a comment which is now deleted, and he says, He's been famous in his chat for grooming young girls on Discord. When he whispered me, I wanted to see if that's true. That statement directly contradicts what he says in the opening statement in the thread, where he says he just randomly decided to go to the stream, and then he just typed something in chat, and then the dude reached out to him. Like, that's a little different. Now he's making it sound like he was in here, in there with, like, a mission. Like, he was going in there as the fucking vigilante and was finally going to expose him. Which is completely different from the narrative that he started with in the original post. He had also recently been banned and had only just been unbanned, like, less than a week ago. And then all of this happens. Like, it's just so many things in this story seem so strange. And then to, like, on that same night talk about, like, how do I delete videos on my hard drive? Talking about, like, I need to scrub the hard drive. Every video needs to go. Someone quick help me. I need to get rid of all these videos. That doesn't strike me as someone who's, like, actually panicking about all of the accusations. That strikes me as someone that's trying to farm karma and attention out of this. It really does seem like the behavior of a troll. Like an extremely edgy, really uh, misguided troll. I mean, because now there's, like, articles about it that are talking about his alleged pedophilic behavior that he's exhibited, you know, over the course of like the last five or six hours those articles have been coming up. So it's like a really bad idea if this really was the plan. Uh, but overall, I just wanted to talk about this because for some reason I was mentioned in it, or at least I was, people perceived that I was mentioned in this. So I at least wanted to talk about it and give like the full breakdown of everything going on. The whole situation's fucked up no matter what is actually going on here. And if everything from the LSF post is true and that's exactly how it all happened, then this is an extremely serious case where this guy needs to be off of Twitch ASAP as well as have some kind of investigation done because this is some really fucked up shit. Uh, I just wanted to talk about it and uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya.